In us at Volcan 2000 is the ultimate thermogenic carnitine that will help you torch stubborn body fat for energy and boost ATP immediately. It is stimulant free, contains zero artificial sweeteners and it tastes amazing. I take Volcan 2000 30 minutes before my cardio session. Within two minutes, I'm energized, focused and ready to work. Um, up first is going to be Cody Cunningham with Suns.com. Uh, Julie said, hold on one second. Okay, that's, that's good with us. <laughs> Okay, Cody, I think you're good to start us off. Hey, Book, uh, a 40-point triple-double for you tonight. Uh, your first ever triple-double in your first ever Western Conference appearance, um, Western Conference Finals appearance. Just, you know, how special did that feel tonight? Um, I mean, it, it's very special, but, you know, the, the win feels better. You know, that's what I'm out there for um, the whole entire time. So, you know, part of the triple-double is the assist, and that's, you know, my teammates making them pay for – you know, running and doubling and, you know, seeing different types of defenses. Um, the rebounds come from D.A. boxing out, you know, when he has a Zubac or Boogie and me coming in and getting the rebound. So, you know, it takes a whole collective team group to get, get what we got done tonight. Next up is Mark Schwartz with ESPN, followed by Paul Richardson. Look, that was fun to watch. Um, I was think I was thinking a lot of times when I see you go off like you did today, I, I think about Kobe and I, I know maybe you think about Kobe too. What, what were you thinking, if anything, and how did Kobe and Chris Paul, for that matter, help you do what you did out there today in your first ever conference finals game? I mean, just what you said, um, you know, I've been a student of the game, you know, for a really long time and, you know, Kobe obviously being one of my mentors and Chris being one of my mentors and not be, being able to be here with us today, you know, we wanted to do it for him. You know, we, we, we talked about that pregame. Um, we knew we were going to all have to give it, you know, a little bit more, um, you know, ball security, you know, my job keeping everybody involved, you know, stuff that's usually on Chris's plate, you know, we all had to make up for it today as a team. And, you know, just the, the mentality, you know, people say the mama mentality, just the approach of, you know, doing whatever it, whatever it takes, you know, at all costs to get a win. You know, it might not be 40 points next game, you know, it might be more assist or making more plays for my teammates to hockey assist. So, you know, every time down, just, you know, value in every possession. Um, and that's something that, you know, Chris doesn't talk about much, but, you know, he's second to none in that category. Um, you know, so just picking up bits and pieces and, you know, using them to my advantage. Next up is Paul Richardson, followed by Tressa Rusneck. Book, you ran a lot. First off, congratulations. Second of all, you ran a lot of point guard with the ball in your hand. You seem to really have a good flow, a good feel for the game. When did it, I don't want to say when did it become comfortable, but when did you kind of know that you were in that flow and you could read exactly what the defense was giving you, you knowing when the pass? Yeah, um... You know, it's just reading the game, you know, from beginning to beginning to end. You know, it's the playoffs. Team's going to make adjustments. Team's going to throw different defenses at you. And, you know, the preparation with our team and, you know, our coaching staff, you know, I feel like we're ready for any type of defense that we see. You know, obviously they're playing small ball lineup um, and they're going to be switching a lot of action. So, you know, we have to find ways to counter that. Um, but really good defensive team over there aggressive defense team over there. So, you know, we should have to take care of the ball and make the right plays. Next up is Tressa Rusnak with AZ Family, followed by Kevin Zimmerman. Hey, Booker, uh, congratulations on tonight. I'm sorry if this is a little repetitive, but just being in the environment tonight in the gym and just seeing how loud everyone was and you've been waiting for this moment a long time. Was there a point when you were on the court where you kind of were like, yeah, this, this is happening or just something where you felt like this was your moment? Um, right at the end, you know, right when we secured that last rebound. You know, so, you know, they're not a team to take lightly. Um, we understand what they've done in their past few games of 
playing all the way through. They came back from a 25 point deficit last game. So, you know, we know we have to finish out every win, you know, until the horde sounds. So, you know, you might see some emotion or some aggression at some points of the game, but, you know, I, I feel like I had to let it out right at the end when we, when we secure game one. Next up is Kevin Zimmerman from Arizona Sports, followed by Richard Sainz. Hey, Buck, sorry if you already mentioned this, but it looked like you were um, on your phone while leaving the floor. Were you talking to Chris there? And what, if possible, were you saying to him and having that conversation? Yeah, we put him on FaceTime. Um, you know, he he's our leader. You know, we, we lean on him for a lot. I um, mean, we know how disappointed he is and frustrated he is. He couldn't be out here. Um, for game one in the Western Conference Finals, especially knowing his his past history around this time. Um, but we know we had him all the way through. You know, we brought him in the locker room. We had him in our in our after game huddle. Um, you know, so he, he's proud of us. He's ready to get back. You know, he's, he's working um, and we, we can't wait to have him. Next up is going to be, sorry, Joe, Joe Van Buha from The Athletic followed by Cameron Cox. Hey, Devin. Um, DeAndre had 20 points tonight, and you guys had 54 points in the paint as a team. Uh, they, they kind of adjust in the second half going bigger. How did you feel about that kind of big versus small cross-matching and, and how you guys fared in that? I mean, that's what we expected. You know, we, we've been watching their games. We've been scouting them, and, you know, they use the small ball lineup a lot. Um, but, you know, it's a different matchup. We have a different team, and, you know, DeAndre's seen that before, and we try to make it, we try to take advantage of that. You know, we try to use our size as an advantage. I think the first play of the game, DeAndre got an offensive rebound and laid it in. Um, so hopefully, you know, we, we make teams adjust to us um, and use our size as our strength when they try to use those lineups. And, you know, when they go big, you know, we, we get right back to what we do. Okay, sorry, we're gonna go back um, to, oops. We'll come back to him in a second. Um, first up is going to be Cameron Cox with 12 News. Then we're going to go back to Richard Sainz. Hey, Book, congrats on the win. Um, you've been in a lot of big moments throughout your career. You've been in a lot of good shooting zones. But where would you rank this performance that you had tonight throughout your career, and given the moment and magnitude and everything on the line? I mean, you know, I'll let you guys do the rankings. Um, you know, I'm just going out there to, you know, win every game possible. And, you know, I've been saying it since the start of the playoffs, you know, every next game is our biggest game. Um, you know, so that's for everybody else to, you know, rank performances and that such, you know, I'm just out there trying to do my job and, you know, that's to win basketball games at all costs. Next up is Richard Sainz, followed by Dwayne Rankin. Hey, Devin, congrats on the win and your performance tonight or today. Um, kind of a two-parter here, I want to ask about the, the pace and, and poise because, you know, the, the, the pace of this game was relentless. How does that play in you guys' favor, especially having the fresh legs after getting you know more time off, and then just your poise down the stretch, uh, you know, not only making shots but but setting up the guys around you as well. Yeah, the pace of play, you know, that's you know that's what we've played with you know all season. You know, we we rely on our defense, and you know if we get a stop, it it lets our offense move slowly, move freely. Um, any type of set or play, you know, in the playoffs, you know, teams have scouted that, you know, so they understand that. So, you know, coach always says he puts us in environments and, you know, we just have to make plays, make basketball plays, be aggressive um, and, you know, put them in rotation. Um, and, and that's our job, you know, one through five is everybody, you know, do their part and just go out there and hoop. But, you know, it starts on the defense and in and, and guarding. Next up is Dwayne Rankin from the Arizona Republic followed by David Brandt. Oh, what up, man? What's up, man? I'm good, I'm good. All is well. All is well. <laughs> what happened when you, how are you feeling when you grabbed that last rebound and, and just solidified it, solidified it? Yeah, it felt good, man. You know, we want to protect home court, you know, so that, that was big for us to come out and secure that one. You know, I don't know if I showed that much emotion, you know, through the playoffs that much, but, you know, not having Chris out there and it, you know, being a high intense game, you know, we wanted that one bad, so. You know, it's obviously only one. We know what they're capable of and what they've done. Came back down 0-2 from, you know, their past two series. So, you know, we got to stay locked in. Do you know you were well on your way to a triple-double? No, nah, man. I mean, I think I've came close a few times in my career and just never got over the hump. But, you know, I'll take it now. Next up is David Brandt with the Associated Press, followed by Chris Haynes. Hey, Devin. What's up? Good to see you, man. Good to see you. Um, 
Paul, uh, you know, Paul George and you were trading some pretty elite shots in that third quarter. He got going and then you kind of had to respond. Did you feel it was kind of an important, you know, they, they were threatening to run away a little bit and then you scored, you know, a bunch of those mid-range jumpers. Just kind of take me through that, that stretch. Yeah, just, you know, trying to assert my aggressiveness in there. Um, without Chris, you know, taking on the playmaking role, you know, of trying to find the balance of keeping everybody involved and imposing my will on the game. And, you know, I think they got up six to eight. I know what stretch you're talking about. And, you know, I just want to be aggressive. So, you know, we did a lot of high ball screens and just get to my spot and, and, and make some shots. Next up is Chris Haynes with Yahoo Sports, followed by Kent Summers. Well, you, you got an old school game. Mm -hmm. you, know, you can get it done. The fundamentals are there. Way you carry yourself, the old school cars you drive. Where does all this come from? Um, it's a product of my environment. You know, I always credit you know the different situations that I've lived in and growing up in, in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and then moving to Moss Point, Mississippi. You know, for then, for me at that time, that was a big culture shock. Um, you know, just two totally different demographics. But you know, I fell in love with culture. You know, of figuring out people and you know, why they act the way they are. And it's usually where, where they're from, um, you know, so just being a sponge to it, being a sponge to everybody around me, everybody I grew up with and, you know, just seeing different things and, and just loving culture um, and loving people. So that's where it came from. Next up is Kent Somers from the Arizona Republic, followed by Anthony Slater. Obviously a lot of tension is going to be on the, the triple double um, for good reasons, but how important was it to, to play all those minutes, handle the ball as much as you did and only have two turnovers personally and, and just seven as a team? Uh, I mean, every time you say turnovers, I think of Chris, man, I've, I've been alongside him all season and, you know, just watching him, you know, control the game and, and you know, how, you know, he, he just never turns the ball over. You know, when he does, it's a, it's a rare sighting. So, you know, we knew that was going to be a, a key for us today is taking care of the ball, you know, with the type of defense that they play. Um, aggressive style defense where they gamble a lot and, you know, we'll reach, you know, we'll reach. And, and you know, we just have to be ready for that. You know, I think if we take care of the ball, you know, it'll put us in pretty good, pretty good situations. And, you know, we usually get a good shot. Next up is Anthony Slater with The Athletic, followed by Greg Moore. What up, Anthony? Um, they talk about three levels forward, right? How important would you say that the second level is, that mid-range? And uh, as it's, you know, over the last decade, kind of diminished league-wide, um, how committed have you been to, to, to really, you know, keeping that second level and what you do there? Yeah, well, that's, uh, you know, that's pretty much been my game my, my whole life. Um, and I never shied away from it, and, you know, I never – have not took them shots. Um, and I just feel that's what a lot of defenses give up, you know, living by the so-called analytics. Um, but, you know, I think it, it's for certain players. And if you put your work in and, you know, you shoot those shots at a high clip that, you know, it's tough for a defense to, to guard that because, you know, that's what they've been giving up all season. Next up is Greg Moore with the Arizona Republic followed by Mark Spears. <clears throat> Hey Devin, uh, good to see you, man. Congratulations on the big game, big win. I noticed, too, that about the first three, three and a half minutes of the game, you didn't take a shot. You moved the ball uh, in a lot of different ways that early. And I noticed that every other one of your teammates got a shot up before you did. I'm curious, was that something you went into consciously to show trust in your teammates, or did that just happen because you trust your teammates? Um, I mean, I always trust my teammates, but – you know, usually the first few minutes of the game is, you know, scanning and analyzing what's going on and what they're throwing, throwing at you. Um, I watched all their games versus Utah and, and Dallas and watched how they guarded Luka and Donovan. Um, you know, so we had a pretty good idea of what they were going to throw at us and you know, continue to throw at us. So, you know, with a, with a small ball lineup, they're going to switch a lot of actions and, you know, they're going to run and hit and, and double that. You know, it's, kind of hard to, to time it because they do it randomly. Um, but, you know, I trust my teammates. It's easy to get off the ball and have somebody else make a play. You know, we, we've been doing that and punishing teams with that all season. Our last two questions are going to be with Mark Spears from ESPN, followed by Mark Medina. Well, kind of 
they didn't know about the other one, as, as you talked about. Hundred percent. What do those two guys mean to you? And do you think having those two uh, African Americans in this position mm -hmm. of power could ultimately have open doors uh, for others with, with a lot of coaching jobs? Open? Yeah, I think that's the the biggest part of what they're doing. You know, people are realizing, understanding what's going on, and you know who the real basketball minds are. Um, that that you know put you know countless numbers of hours into their craft and their work, and you know I've seen those situations of being on the court before. So you know it's easier for them to approach us with conversation um, when they have an understanding where we're coming from, um, and I think that connection, you know, the the general manager and the head coach. You know, that connection, that relationship with the players is is very important if you want to, you know, win big. And, and with Paul, have any players on other teams asked you what that's like? They haven't. Um, they haven't. I don't, I don't talk, do you, I don't do talk you, to many people on different teams. Rarity, uh, like, appreciate the rarity of being, having that opportunity. Yeah, we have to. You have to give your props to uh, Ty over there also, you know, coaching their team. So, you know, it's, you know, the game is transform transforming. You see, you know, more African-Americans in position. Um, and I think it's going to continue to happen if you continue to see success and understand how important the relationship aspect of it is. Our last question is with Mark Medina, uh, USA Today. Hey, Dad, I'm um, you. Yeah, obviously, guys, we've liked CPL before, but what do you think has been the process this playoffs and being able to adjust with or without him as well as just handling the different season long challenges within the new coach Yeah, it's tough. Um, but we talked at the beginning of the season um, and said, if we want to get to where we go, you know, you're going to have to come out with something. You know, it's not going to be gravy all the way through. It's not going to be sweet all the way through. So, you know, our job is to, you know, control the controllables. You know, whatever the situation is, we have to adjust to it. And, you know, we have to keep playing through and keep playing hard. And, you know, that's the story of our team and it's been, been it for the whole season. Just keep playing hard no matter the circumstances, all 48 minutes. Thanks for the time, Book. Appreciate it. Let's get ready for Hoop Jab.